Our uh, last uh, member uh, is uh, Congressman Charles Bostani. In the last Congress after the BP spill, uh, Congressman Bostani was the first uh, to bring to our attention, I say our collectively in the Congress, our attention, the effects of the moratorium on jobs and then the ensuing effects of the de facto moratorium uh, on jobs. And he's been an active player in this as we, in, also in this new Congress. So I'm pleased that he uh, also came over. So uh, Congressman Charles Bastani. Well, thank you, Chairman Hastings. And I, I uh, want to thank you and the committee for offering this courtesy uh, to me to participate in this hearing. I'm not a member of the Natural Resources Committee, but I serve on the House Ways and Means Committee where I chair the Oversight Subcommittee. And uh, we deal with basically the tax code, trade issues, and everything uh, that affects the U.S. economy. And, uh, but the bottom line for me is that we've got a lot of things going on that affect our Gulf Coast economy. And for those of you who don't know me personally, I represent the southwest coastal area of Louisiana and uh, the, the, the parishes of Cameron and Vermillion on the coast in particular, which are very similar to our area here in southeast Louisiana with oil and gas production, our fishing, our seafood industry, and so forth. Uh, as has been said, uh, we're approaching the one-year anniversary of this really tragic event, and it was tragic on so many levels. The human tragedy, 11 lives lost, many who've lost their businesses or their jobs as a result of all this. You cannot, you cannot underestimate the impact or overestimate the impact of this human tragedy. But it's also an economic tragedy, an environmental, and an ecological tragedy. And Chairman Hastings, I think uh, you and others from, who don't live on the Gulf Coast of Louisiana uh, will really start to understand through this hearing and through the many other contacts you've had with folks from down here on the coast that we're pretty resilient. We've gone through multiple hurricanes, and now this, and we always manage to find a way to come back because we have so much faith in who we are and our culture. And that culture is linked to the coast. It's a culture that recognizes that energy policy, economic policy, and environmental policy can all go hand in hand together. And that's what I think makes us unique here in Louisiana. With regard to what's happened with American energy production, I think it's really important to understand that those cultural instincts that we've had, we have that go back generations are what really drives us to safety. And everyone who works on these rigs recognizes that they're our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, and others. We live together, and we all look out for each other. And so when a federal bureaucrat like Michael Bromwich or, uh, or Ken Salazar will, says that Washington has to dictate safety, we know a little bit about safety down here. We live it day in and day out in so many aspects of our lives. And so when this move was put on to shut down American energy production in the Gulf of Mexico, and with first a moratorium and then a de facto moratorium, which still persist, what they're basically saying is that they don't believe in our culture. They don't believe that we care about who we are and about our brothers and sisters who work on these rigs, our families. And they don't understand that you just cannot turn this off and then turn it right back on like a light switch because there's no school that teaches you all this on these rigs. Just like there's no school that teaches you the art of fishing, whether you're a commercial fisherman or a recreational fisherman. You learn it from experience by working. And that's why you can't turn this on or turn it, uh, after you've turned it off so quickly. And that's what's at stake. It's basically our entire economy, uh, whether it's in fishing and seafood, our oysters, our shrimp, or our American energy production. It's critical that we get it going again today. And so I'm thankful to you for holding this hearing and thankful to our panelists and the, those who are participating today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.